Are y'all familiar with Mr. Beast? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So Mr. Big Dog. Mr. Beast is uh, the biggest YouTuber of all time. He has the most subscribers. He has the most plays. I think there's there's a channel called T Series out of India that can kind of neck and neck with him, but he has surpassed him, and he is the biggest. He just got an Amazon deal to do a game show, billions of dollar. Miller Zaxby's the motherfucker too. He has a Miller Zaxby's. <laughs> he has a uh, chocolate expensive. company. She um, too expensive. She might be hidden though. Yeah. But he has come under some fire recently, um, and his uh, his partner, his, his um, friend from before he got famous, uh, recently left his family. Well, I don't know if he left or got kicked out of his family, but he has a son, and he had a wife, and he started transitioning into a woman, transgender, okay. um, and lost his family, uh, started going further and further into, into transitioning. And um, people started, you know, saying, hey, what's going on here? You know, what's going on? And just recently came out that his friend, Chris, was contacting minors Mm. in inappropriate ways, Mm. building relationships with them, grooming them. And now this is starting to really become under fire. Now, we're not going to talk too much about that. There's a bunch of videos if you want to find out more about that. Um, But uh, who do you mean? He's a he's a guy in our space. Does yeah. awesome, awesome content. Dope really content. good content. Yeah, does, Last year, he actually covered kind of like the Mr. Beast faith. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't know, Mr. Beast when he was starting to do YouTube was at a Christian high school or college. Again, yeah. I think a college, and you know, claimed to be a Christian. Yeah. And then slowly over time, he started shedding that. So, mm-hmm. of course, we bring this up. I mean, this is this is what most Christians, young creatives, say. Hey, I want to be. Influential. I want to be successful so I can share the gospel. And then slowly over time, you see them stop sharing the gospel. You yeah. see them stop uh, talking about Jesus. Agnostic. And then you see them denounce him. Yeah. So let, I want to he- let you hear a clip of who do you mean. Go watch this full video. He does an amazing job. He actually does an amazing job of breaking down a lot of popular yeah. people's um, faith journey. He did Joe Biden. He did um, Trump. He did a bunch of people. I think he did Oprah too. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he's going to do uh, Kamala Harris. But... Go watch his stuff, man. He's awesome. But here's a clip of what he said Dude. about me. Is it true that your old YouTube banner your old YouTube used to be like a Bible verse? It did. I used to go to a Christian school back in the day. Oh, yeah. But now it's like, it's just kind of hard to tell what's right or what's wrong. Like yeah. religion-wise, there's so many and I don't know. I believe there is some kind of God, but yeah. how do you know? But no longer believing in Christianity left Mr. Beast without the insurance that there was indeed life after death. He now had a deep-seated fear of dying that his new beliefs seemed to be incapable of helping to resolve. You afraid of death, by the way? Yes. I, I, it's hard because like, what if you just die and then you just see nothing forever, you know? Yeah, the nothingness. So it just fades to blackness and you're just like that for trillions upon trillions to billion squared years. And it's just, it's scary. But also before you're born, you don't remember those what, X amount of years either. That gives me a little comfort, but no, it's definitely very scary. Something I'd rather not think about until I'm like 80. Mm. So yeah, in this video, he breaks down, you know, like the journey he took while he was starting to become famous on YouTube. He first got famous for giving away a ton of money, which, you know, I assume he's pulling that from his Christian upbringing of, you know, being generous and things like that. And he still does that. But clearly some stuff is going wrong. All right. Mm -hmm. What do you think about his journey and kind of what he's been dealing with recently? Again, he's now under fire himself because people are saying that he was aware of what his friend was doing. He he clearly saw some. There were some um, pictures of inappropriate artwork about kids and suggestive situations uh, that he saw. There's videos of him looking at it, so he knew oh, what wow. was going on. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 really bad. So what do you what do you think about this journey? Is this is this like inevitable for people who are aiming to you know kind of come up in the world as a Christian to kind of fall off? How do you combat that? How do you stay solid as you rise? I think, man, the number one thing is you have to be grounded in the word first. Yeah. You have to be. Um, you have to you have to picture yourself um, like living the way Jesus lived, right? You have to picture that what if this is all there is, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a scary thought, right? The son of man didn't have a place to lay his head. So you you're thinking like, okay, 
that's going to be I, when I when I submit to that live that way of living when I submit to that lifestyle then that's when you start saying okay you know what anything else could come at me but I already have the foundation I know what I'm supposed mm-hmm. to do I know you know what God wants me to do as far as reaching others and and preaching the gospel to all four corners of the earth and so that's where I think that we have to be before those other things start to take flight the fame the money those things otherwise yeah it's going to be easy to go down that road you know i was um having devotion the other day and i was saying i don't ever want to get to the point where i put something else ahead of this you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. this is important to me this is important to my family and so to get to that point where you're like money is not an option you're chilling vacations you know around the world and you're not taking that time to still cultivate that relationship and go into that word mm-hmm. that's scary that's scary and I think that's what caused you know um, Solomon's downfall you know just having all the riches and all the all the all the wisdom and then you know slowly over time you're introduced to these false gods and then you just continue to go down that route and then you can't find your way back do you, do you think um, his heart was never as a Christian do you think he just Grew up in like he went to a Christian school, you know, because sometimes yeah. people think, you know, I grew I grew up in a church or I grew up. Uh, my parents sent me to a Christian school, yeah, and you know, success got to him and he got he started getting money. So when money comes into place, and like you said, if if yeah. God ain't really in your heart, that money gonna be like. Let's go. You know what I mean? So there's a deep, deep theology question again. We're, we're approaching on it. It really <laughs> yeah. depends on what you believe. Um, either he was never Christian because, mm-hmm. again, like um, in the Bible, it says that if you are willing to walk away, you were never there in the yeah. first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> so it could be that he was never Christian. Could be that he's, you know, severely backslidden and God is still going to hold him and mm-hmm. bring him back to him one day. So that's yeah. the prayer that. You know, he'll come back one day if, if he ever was a Christian. Either way, it's pray for him. Yeah. You know, hopefully he'll mm-hmm. come into the knowledge that he, because he clearly doesn't have. There's no way you could believe what we believe about Jesus and then say what he said on these interviews. Yeah. I, I mean, he's he no agnostic, right? He sounded like he said, I'm, I'm agnostic. Yeah. I do yeah. believe God exists, but I just don't know which God is the true God. He's just a classic case of where there's no boundaries, there's going to be chaos. So, yeah. If you look at his life, as a believer, as a Christian, we have certain boundaries to put in our life, not to just box us in, but to protect us from things that could take our life down the wrong road. Mm. When you don't have those boundaries and then you get a large amount of money, which money is going to bring exposure, you're going to be able to see things and experience things you're not going to be able to experience when you broke. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. money bringing the exposure. You don't have the boundaries of Christ. You a sitting duck for whatever the enemy has to throw at you. He gonna throw women at you. He gonna throw money at you. He might throw little boys at you. Whatever he gonna throw. <laughs> you a lot of these people fall. Yeah. That, 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 yeah. that, that what we talking about. His, his, his partner is a pedophile. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's so saying, like, yeah, it's a lot of them. He's like, all kind of perversion can come into play when you don't have those boundaries. His life is in chaos right now. Yeah. He got this big platform. He's successful. He got that meal his ass. Now I know what he got going on. I'm not gonna buy it no more. But <laughs> you know, yeah. he had all this stuff going on. But look, he's falling you apart at know. the seams. He losing the battle within, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. it's like you don't have no boundaries, so it's chaos. His whole life is just chaotic right now. You should have known about that meal. It was like four young wings in it, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's chicken strips, it, cheese bites, it was fries, tender. and and chocolate. I don't want nothing tender no more. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let me ask you this question because it's you. We have a lot of Christian schools and things like that, right? How dangerous is it to force Christianity on people that don't actually receive discipleship from it? Force is a strong word. So right. my my your kids are at a Christian school too, right? No, they're at a charter school. My mine is mine is at a Christian school, and I grew up in all Christian schools. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, nice. So force is a strong word. It is it is an expectation. Mm-hmm. It is it is um, taught, and it you know, and and they do expect you to participate. Is it better or worse than to teach them the opposite? Well, I think it, when I think about it, like kind of like what he said or what you've heard people say who come from Christian schools is that they were, uh, you know, they read the Bible to us. They made us go to chapel, but it wasn't in their heart to do those things. Right. So how dangerous is it for you to force something on somebody who is either not ready for it? Or hasn't been discipled into what it actually is. Like it's not a it's not enough to go to chapel and sing the songs and then dismiss yeah. them and go home. 
Well, so where does I, I that would, tie in with the where does that tie in with the train them up if they should go? Yeah, on that's yeah, exactly that's what I was you thinking. Know, you have you have to. Yeah, you, know, you, you have, have to teach them. Now there is truth to what you're saying, though. Some yeah. of the people that you train up end up being the fiercest enemies of God at yeah. the end. Mm-hmm. But again, what's the alternative? Not teach them? Yeah. Not, well, I right. think that there's a way to. I think there's a way to 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 do it, but it it almost feels like it needs individual discipleship. Yeah, not individual. just group where everybody's hearing the same thing and you're not necessarily understanding if everybody's getting it or they have questions about but, it. But I, I, I will say this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Nico. No, oh, I'm sorry. But I think as a parent, if we're talking about children, I think that's when, like, when you have one-on-ones with your kids. Like, yeah. when yeah. you, like, you could do stuff group with your children, but then, like, your oldest, when it's just y'all two, you ask those questions. Yeah. Like, do you... What do you think about this? Do you yeah. believe what you're? Do you believe that? Like, what do you? What do you believe? In? Be honest with me. But yeah. like, do you? You? I'm being your father right now. So just be truthfully honest with me. Do you believe what we're talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think that's when she, she or your kids would be like, "Well, daddy, I don't understand this." Or yeah. blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? You got to balance it um, between training them up, but also allowing them to have their own journey as well. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes some parents want it so bad for their children to follow Christ that they begin to micromanage their relationship with God. You don't allow them to go through the ups and downs and the pitfalls that you go through in your relationship. Mm. Uh, one of my good friends and it's an artist, Antoine Hill, shout out to Antoine. He posted something this week. His daughter goes to all his shows and his events, but she sent him a text message and said, thank you dad for allowing me to find my own way to Christ. Like you never forced me, you know, you never just told me I had to do this, had to do that. You shared the gospel with me, you shared yeah. the word with me, but you allowed me to live life so I can have a genuine, authentic relationship. It wasn't something I was force fed mm-hmm. to the point where now I'm kind of a little bit, I kind of don't really like it because you see that with sports or anything, when you force your kids to do something, it kind of takes the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, the fun out of it, it kind of takes the, the intentionality yeah. out of it. It's just like. It, ta- it takes wisdom, but I definitely don't want to um, have any parents shy away from teaching oh, yeah, your kid no. the right, truth. Right, right, right. You can't you well, can't present it yeah. as if it is a truth. You still have to present it as the truth. The truth. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. once they once they hit school, they're going to hear a bunch of other truths. So yeah. they need to know from the beginning yeah. what the truth yeah. is. If they decide yeah. to go away from it, then that's on yeah. them. But yeah, yeah. I think to reshape my question is that when I remember being with youth ministries, right? Like as a as a leader, yeah. a lot of parents just dropped their kids off like it was a babysitter. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like but, they, yeah. they weren't yeah. really reinstilling what they learned back at the house. Yeah. How many parents do you think send their kids to Christian schools that are non believers and could care less? A lot. So me yeah. and my wife teach uh Sunday school now. Hope none of the parents are listening. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> some of these kids, man, they say some of the craziest things. Yeah, they yeah. sure do. Wow. And some of they, some of y'all parents ain't saved. Jesus. Like literally, no. I'm telling you, like this kid came in <laughs> and was saying, like challenging me, like Jesus, Jesus isn't the only way. What do you mean? Mm. You know what I mean? Like just like, excuse me, who's who's how your old, dad? How old was he? <laughs> I need to talk to him because clearly, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it was like eight. Oh, oh wow. wow! So it's yeah. like, man, like yeah, you can't assume. <laughs> you can't assume because again, you, you understand. There's a large population of people again, cultural Christians who they just want their kid not to be bad. Yeah. yeah. So it's like if yeah. if I put them in church, at least they'll be a good person. Yeah, I don't really care if they believe it. Don't really care if yeah. I believe it. It's just it's better than not putting them in there better in their jail. mind, yeah. right? Yeah. So <laughs> that's <laughs> not moral contract. That's yeah. not good enough. And assuming your kid is just gonna turn out okay just because they're in a Christian yeah. thing is yeah. not enough. It has to really come from yeah. It has to come from the parent, and the parent has to be wise enough to know how to teach their kid about yeah. the truth. Right. Again, yeah. at the end of the day. And, I, and it's it's a hard thing to say, but even with my daughter, I'm praying I'm praying that she learns about Jesus enough to where she really believes yeah. in her heart. Because even me, I I would say that even though I was I was saved at a young age, you know, grew up in the church, everything, I had to at some point around 17 had to really really say, okay, this is me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to do this. Yeah. I believe in Jesus. Yeah. 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 So yeah. every every person has to go through that that moment where it's yeah. like it's, i'm not believing this because of my mom and my yeah, dad so. anymore yeah. i'm believing this because of me i believe you jesus you yeah. know what i mean yeah. so uh, 
but what we're hoping for is what Plain said is that you instill the word in them, it won't come back void. Like God yeah. will hold on to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And those prayers that I've seen too many people at the, at the last moment say, "Man, all those prayers finally worked." Yeah. I was that kid. So even yeah, that was so, me. Yeah. I, I, I had I, I had to go to church. My mom was like, "You yeah. as long as you living in the house, you the, gotta in go." My house. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I didn't have no rela- I didn't understand what relationship was. I didn't understand right. what it meant mm-hmm. to walk with God and have to study and read the Bible. I thought we just read the Bible. We were at church. You know what I'm saying? Like just being real. And do you have siblings? Hmm? Mm-hmm. And, and how did that go, go for everyone else? Man, shoot, really the same way. You know what I'm saying? I would say, like, a lot of my family, like, we always, be, we'll say we believed in God, believed in Christ, mm-hmm. but when nobody really living out just a true relationship for yeah. real, we, we okay. prided ourselves on trying to be good people, helping people and stuff like that, but it wasn't no, like, being able to go in Scripture, break it down in context and understand what it meant and how to apply it to my life. Wasn't none of that going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I was 27 when that happened. <laughs> you know oh, what I'm wow. saying? Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And that was different. Yeah. I had it on both sides. Like, my father's family was devout my mother's family was devout so I never ran across anybody who was non-believer like in my family like, we lead oh, church oh wow we lead yeah. church we eating and drinking cold beer you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> hey, I think I think also the, to the liquor house I think also the, <laughs> the, the liquor house <laughs> that's, the liquor house that's return I, I think the scariest thing though I would say this is um, re- the religion part of it and I think that's the scary part because I feel like so many people and we're not even talking about people in the world that say, I grew up religious. I'm talking about people that's in church mm-hmm. and they just have a religious heart. Yeah. And yeah. that's scary too because you, it, that, that's a trick of the enemy because you think, you know, because I know I know the songs, I know that scripture, I know this, yeah. I know that, but your heart is nowhere near Jesus. Yeah, you're that's not submitted. I, yeah. That's why I always ask, are you sure? Are you sure you're saved? Yeah. Because yeah. I think even like us discussing this, Sean, are you sure? Yeah, you have to. You have to check yourself because yeah. you could you could grow up knowing all the right words, the the Christianese. You got it down pat. Yeah, yeah. You, could, you could argue somebody under a bus. Yeah, but we yeah. have people in Christian hip hop that used to do that that are now atheists. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. yeah. several of them. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. that is not enough. You really have to really decide based on what I've heard so far. Do I really believe God created this world? He sent His Son to die for my sins, rose again. This is real. Yeah. I think a lot of people they get to a certain place where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that. But you really believe yeah. it because yeah. there's a lot of people that are going to make you look like a fool. Yeah. They're going to make you feel like a fool for believing yeah. that. And a lot of people give into that feeling. Yeah. But that's yeah. scriptural though. That's yeah. the, the scripture talks about you're going to look like a fool to um, f- w- foolish worldly wisdom. So the message of the cross is foolish to those yeah. who are perishing. Yeah. 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 So I mean, that's just you, you're just part of it. I just think I think what we we have to do is people have to come together. Like minded Christians have to come together and help each other. Because I think I think sometimes people are so scared to do stuff by themselves yeah. and scared to like step out and scared to do different things that once you get around believers, that's like helping you grow in your faith. Yeah. And then you like, man, I could call on him or I could call on her mm-hmm. and whatever that grows you, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then that's something that, you know, you have in Bible study with people and y'all yeah, talking yeah. about the scriptures, how what God has done to you in that scripture, what you need to be praying about once y'all finish reading that scripture. Amen. It's just, just being real, man. And I think that's the thing that's missing up, which is discipleship 101, you know what I yeah. mean? Hanging with people and really seeing how they live. And then also I would say about parents too, parents have to make God look like, man, that's amazing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, God has to be so amazing. Of like, you're, as a parent, like your kids got to be like, if my mom and dad serve God because I, I've seen them go through some stuff, but God moved on their behalf, then He has to be what they. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if, if that's they, actually my testimony. Yeah. Like, I got saved really young. I could have been like six or seven. Wow. Um, but I literally looked at my mom's life versus everyone else's in my life, and mm-hmm. I was just like. Her life is better. Yeah. Like it's literally better. Even of the the people in my family, like aunties and uncles that also pro- proclaimed Jesus that they were saved and stuff. But I was able to see the difference between being submitted mm-hmm. and loving mm-hmm. Jesus and not. And yeah. I was like, this is a logical mm-hmm. decision. It's not even yeah. just spiritual. It literally is the best. And I actually started out in a Christian school and then went to a public school. So my mom really instilled into yeah. us and Get like walked ready. that life out for us. <laughs> Same. Yeah. But two out of three. Um, my brother is not necessarily walking with Christ, but we're praying for his, you know, yeah. he walking out his testimony. But it's so funny because it's literally training the child in the way that they should go to where he even get frustrated. Like, darn it, I am not a Christian, but I'm still living the Christian way. Wow. Like, oh, wow. and he's just like, I can't get around it. So even if like they decide to, like you said, find their own way and their own testimony, training them up, it 
sets up boundaries and yeah. roadblocks that they can't push past and it still protects them God so it's like God is yeah. still protecting we gotta yeah. pray more than we talk yeah. but it's like logically and morally there's some things he just can't do or when I was in college it was just things I just couldn't do even yeah. when I wanted to like yeah. go with the crowd yeah. I was like I'm sorry even with me when I was selling dope I, I just, it was a certain amount I just wouldn't do like my homeboy they'd be selling crack and doing all that kind of stuff yeah, you told me that I, I had a conscience I was like I'm not gonna sell nothing that I ain't gonna use Yeah. so I was yeah. smoking weed so I sold weed you know what I'm saying like I ain't finna say you know crack I ain't finna say you know meth I ain't finna smoke it so why I'm selling yeah. so I'm like how I'm in, how I'm in the dope game in that <laughs> game <laughs> with, a, with a conscience you know what I'm saying <laughs> so it was yeah. a conscience drug yeah. Yeah. Like conscious drug dealer. <laughs> no, yeah. but I, that's the thing. God, God will, God will keep bothering you. <laughs> yes, keep tapping yeah. you. And keep that's what tapping. you're praying for. When you're praying for somebody, you're praying that God keeps bothering them. Yeah. yeah, tapping them. Like, come on, you know me. You know who it is. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Who it is. yeah. Come on back. Yeah, come and on. and 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 he'll keep pursuing them until he gets them. Like, he, like it's it's the whole sheep. The one sheep goes. Yeah, he'll lead the ninety nine and pursue that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're praying that God will never, no matter how far away yeah. that one sheep gets, he will never stop searching for him. Yeah. yeah, that's real, man. Yeah. So yeah, pray gotta, for Mr. Beast, man. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. God could do anything and God could reach his homeboy. And somebody said in the chat that he has somebody on his show that's a Christian. But um, yeah, just pray for that whole situation, bro. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate mm -hmm. name, though. Mr. Beast, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fortunate. But he was Mr. Yeah. Beast with the, the scriptures. When he, was in, <laughs> when he was in the yeah, church, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so God could, God could save the anybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. No, but I think That's also, true. too, I think that goes back to, because he, he has, like, you would think he was a Christian based off the videos you released, because he's so Solid generous serving people. Yeah. and serving. Like, he has the heart, but it's just like, God, like embrace his heart. Like, yeah. I mean, open yeah. his heart so he can receive you again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And but you know, too, it could be bad company corrupts good character. Yeah. So it's like, also, like you said, community is it's not optional. It's essential. Mm -hmm. If you're going to walk this life out, the enemy wants us to believe that we need to be isolated. No, you need community. Like even yeah. God in the Trinity is in community. We were made in his image. Yeah. So we need that. Like we need bread and water and the rest of that, yeah. which I'm reading a book that's talking about that's amazing. It's called A Holy Haunting by Sam Kim. But like you need community and people that are accountability partners that are going to push you towards the same goal. So like even in this, it's not we don't know for sure if he's doing these things. But the fact that your roommate got all of this stuff and you looking at pictures, you fall in because of this. Ain't no boundaries. Yeah. Well, it just shows <clears throat> that he, he tries so hard to defend his friend. Lies will be lies will be lies. You can't keep calling a lie the truth. Him defending his friend and saying, oh, this yeah. is normal and all this kind of stuff. The further you get away from the truth, you start calling lies the truth. You start calling darkness light. Yeah. It can't be light. Yeah. It can't be the yeah. truth. Yeah. It is not. It's li You're literally yeah, lying sure. to I'm everyone by saying that this is normal. Yeah. What your friend is going through is not normal. He lost his family. He, he's not around his son he's now is completely in the darkness how you lose you, your kid and start playing with kids you can't <laughs> you can't you cannot keep <laughs> calling darkness light and I hope I hope <laughs> sure, I'd be like, I hope no seriously I hope kids to kids I hope that he Lord. takes this as an opportunity to course correct to realize yeah, that's true lies are lies you already heard the truth that's why god says it's so dangerous for somebody you know the seed that's um put on rocky soil mm -hmm. and it doesn't sprout up you've heard the truth yeah you somebody has told you the gospel clearly yeah. you're yeah. around it too much for you to turn your back on it man i just just pray that it's not too late for him and that he remembers yeah what he first learned so yeah. Yeah. first love so, so. Amen. Which draws back to the question you said before. How do you continue and maintain in this walk is staying in step with the Lord. Like you said, stand in the secret place, praying with the Lord. Because, too, we can also fall to, what is it, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the, the lust pride of, of pride, yeah. the pride, pride of life. life. Pride yeah. of life. Yeah. So it's like, even though you're doing everything you can, you still have an enemy that is walking around like a roaring lion waiting to devour you. You run the same three plays. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the same, it's the same old game. Nah, I was on Mad. You had that yeah. one play nobody can stop. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, what are you doing? Was it Fly Post? Hey, you had post? Mike, you had Mike, yeah, Mike Vic. Vic. Mike Vic on Mad. They send everybody, send hey. everybody down the field. Yeah, they run, and they run around the line. Oh, it's that was it. That was yeah. it, bro. It's Every over. time. Yep. Amen. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit will lead and guide and show you the game yeah yeah he's he's our safety yeah yeah, yeah.